This is one of the most anticipated presentations for me at the event. It is talking about EV charging stations by Flow, the biggest and most famous EV charging equipment manufacturer in Canada. As a person who do not have an EV but really want to get on board, you understand how excited I am on this. Although I have a lot of disagreements, I would like to say, but this video is for them. So, um, without further ado, uh, we'd like to introduce our colleagues from uh, Flow and Energy. We're very proud to uh, represent a Canadian manufacturer of electric vehicle charging equipment. And uh, very happy to have uh, brought these gentlemen here today to speak to you. So, Alexander Ohm and Pascal Friedman, I'd like to uh, come and, without further ado. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, uh, everyone. Is it correct? Okay. So thank you, uh, John, uh, for this great opportunity uh, for being here in front of you, and we are really happy to be here for uh, to talk about our experience because it's the most important for us. Both of us are driving an electric car. Me, I have a Volt. He, he has a Volt. And uh, may I introduce you, uh, Alexandre, he is one of my EV specialists for the car market, and me, I am the regional sales manager for Eastern Canada. So today, we want to talk, yes, of course, about the future, but the future has already started. So, what's news? What's up about the EV life, Alex? Sure, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. We're really glad to be here. We are uh, doing a presentation this morning to uh, start with uh, what might be uh, of interest to you first and uh, get into what uh, the company is later. I mean, we're, it's upside down. So uh, we're just going to start and to maybe encourage some people to uh, adopt the, EV, the electric vehicle, but also to adopt the infrastructure as well. I think there's a lot of people here asking about that. So let's start with this. Basically, it's uh, every time we speak with people, we kind of repeat the same thing because <laughs> we're trying to spread the news. Basically, if you're opting for electric vehicles, you'll be thinking instead of uh, charging, I mean, uh, filling up uh, once or twice a week, you'll start to fill up everywhere you go. That's the first thing that's going to be different. Uh, and you'll have multiple sites where to charge up at. Now at the moment, everybody knows that the infrastructure is not uh, at the rendezvous yet, but we're here to uh, grow with uh, Nova Scotia and Atlantic to uh, set it all up. There's more and more every day. Oh, yeah, I can yeah. switch it. So like I said, no more gas station stops. Uh, they fill up almost everywhere, low maintenance. Uh, it's more silent, there's no smell. Uh, you're gonna teach good values to the next generation. And uh, trust me, it'll grow on you when you get uh, to try one out. Yeah, <coughs> and, and maybe we could add something very important. It is really addictive to drive an electric car. So, uh, is there some drivers, EV drivers here? Yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah, so we're starting out, and we're, we hope to have more in the following years. Um, okay, so where does it happen? What's so different about driving electric? Well, the point is, there isn't really any difference. Um, you're doing the same with an EV that you're doing with a, a, an, an internal combustion engine. Let's call it that ICE engine. So we want to make that, sh uh, that clear so that uh, every basic question will be answered this morning. If you look at the numbers, you will see important things that will make you think of the EV market or the driving in, a, in a, maybe a new day and a new light today. So basically you'll be charging at home most of the time. And in the future you'll have more and more and more infrastructure at work. So that would uh, explain that number. And anybody that goes out of town to visit or to do a trip or business trip like I do myself and so does Pascal, I do it with a uh, a Volt, which has a gas uh, engine in it, and he does it with a full electric car. But we're part of the few that really do travel out of town. So that would explain that number to them. And it's only a change of habits, of course. When you drive 
When you buy an electric car, you are wondering a lot of questions. It's only at the beginning, and actually it's so simple, very simple. Um, uh, the electric vehicles uh, right now in the market, we're in the infancy of the market. We're going to see more and more uh, larger range vehicles, of course, so you can buy one between 200 and 500 kilometers. I think you know most of the models, of, be them uh, Teslas or Nissans or GMs or whatever. But the one question that everybody has, has to ask themselves in any situation, if anybody quarters you, <laughs> I mean, it's our trick, always ask yourself, how many kilometers do you drive per day? Because you'll be full every morning. So let's start with that. What's the reality, Alex? The reality is, Pascal, that uh, <laughs> we are we're going, to, we're going to demonstrate something because the first question that always comes to mind is always, uh, I need more range, I want a very uh, large battery. Uh, what happens when I go to, to drive down to Boston or, or when I drive to New York or you know, for that, you know, what I'm getting at? So that's always the first thing that people think of while they're trying to consider or select a model and we believe that's not the right way to go about it, but still, it is a reality. You always see people driving around and making it across Canada or to California with their bold and, and, and publishing about it on their media, social medias. But, uh, but basically, uh, it's a very low percentage of people that actually do long distances. At the moment, the electric cars are not made for long distances, but some people are maniac enough to do them and to talk about it. That's the market at this point, but every day, everybody here, <clears throat> ask yourselves, what do you do all week? What you really do is you commute, you do the errands, and you go have fun with the kids. I think we can all share that reality, and that's 95% of your needs. So that will bring up to mind, that might help you uh, select a, uh, a car. I'm not here to sell you cars, obviously, but that help you in your considerations. Are your, some people are right at uh, considering it. So just remember how many kilometers you drive per day and also what do you really do during the week. We have to demystify a lot of things when we talk about electric cars. It's only a change of habits. So. Oh, yeah, so it's a paradigm. Yeah, paradigm. Yeah. Exactly. <coughs> So these are two uh, of the most important slides we have in the presentation, and we'd like to take you through this point by point because that's what we do every day, that's what we live with. And the whole idea behind the presentation is to help you guys uh, understand more about it and to generate the right questions that you should be asking yourselves and then us, right? <clears throat> So we're looking at home. Uh, most of the charging happens at home. It's a level two charger. It's a charging station, should I say, remember that. Uh, it's a charging station at 240 volts, uh, and then the vehicle stays there for the whole night. So first, of, first, uh, first thing you might think about, okay, I'm talking about, obviously, your own personal need, which, uh, which will be your customer's needs in the future. Uh, you'll be using this, this uh, charging station every every day, but many times more than once a day or more than two, three, four, five times a day. Every day you go out, that's what I do. I mean, oh, what yeah, you're doing yeah. with the that's Saturday, that's it. Yeah. same thing. The other thing we get, uh, the other question we get, say, what do you do with, uh, do you leave it plugged in? Yes, you do. Yes, you simply do. You leave it plugged in at all times for preheating, cell balancing, or that's just a technology that needs to do uh, Yeah, and, and, this, and this feature is so great in winter because when it's minus creating, your car is always created, so it's great. Yeah, you, you can heat up the car before you get out, yeah. but the whole idea is to optimize your range because it's balancing up the, the cells and you get your full battery, of course, every morning. Safety is key, so when you're considering infrastructure and when you're considering putting up a 240 volt uh, unit at your home where your family lives, where you plug in your brand new $50,000 car, uh, at the moment they're 50,000, but we're looking at going lower in the next few years. I mean, uh, you want something that is sturdy and reliable, but very, very safe. 
Also, you want on the long term what we have seen and the, and the experience of. I'm not talking about only myself, but as a company, we get all uh, all the experience out there, and all of our engineers feed us with a lot of uh, feedback they get from the market, and that's how they develop the products. Uh, it's simple as uh, preventing water to go in, preventing uh, a bug to go in, and doing a nest and shortcutting the electronics in there. I mean, you want something that's airtight, watertight, and, and just stays there and works all the time. <clears throat> also, this is something you might find interesting as well, off, uh, off peak charging for all EVs. And when I say for all EVs, is that uh, you can program it in the car, in the EV, obviously, but the idea of level two charging at home is that you can set it to work between such and such hour, so it's out of or off peak time whatever car you're plugging into. Now, at the moment, there's not a whole lot of EVs in the, in the Atlantic uh, provinces, or, or for that matter, in Canada, it's Quebec, and it's, it's under 1%, right? But in the future, it'll grow to 5, 10, 15%. You'll see, the first thing we saw was that people start to adopt an EV and then buy a second one because they loved it so much the first time. And, and, and now they're, uh, they're using two different EVs, two different manufacturers, so the unit at your home will do the same behavior for every other EV. Or people visiting, or I even heard people having Airbnbs at home and like to, you know, have the same rules for them. Remote support for immediate help. Imagine you're counting on your charging station every morning to have a full battery, a full, uh, full, full, fully filled car. Uh, and uh, something happens during the night, let's say a, a faulty electrical installation or a localized storm or something like that, and, and you see like a red light on the, on the charging station. What you want at this point, looking at your 10 kilometer range battery at it's 8.30 in the morning, it's 8 in the morning, <coughs> I'm sorry, maybe 7 in the morning or something like that. <coughs> then you're stuck. So what you want is remote support. Like you can call up the manufacturer as a manufacturer support and we can look into the um, uh, charging station at your home and help restart it to get you on your way. That's one way. And the second way would be that we could catch that during the night before you wake up in the, in the morning and see that it's been localized storm and then we can restart the units from afar. Some utilities will like that, some, uh, some uh, uh, direct clients will like that because we can help them to help them with that for all connected units. There's another question here, power of the unit itself. Uh, 7.2 is a standard, 7.2 kilowatt is, uh, is a standard power uh, for charging stations at home for about 30 kilometers per hour of charging, depending right on the weather, depending on the, uh, all kinds of uh, yeah, and for the remember the number of kilometers you're going to do by the day. <laughs> right, right. It's the so, most important. Yeah, I'll give you an example. I, I used to drive the uh, Volt 2017, and then I know it's all brand new cars. I'm sorry about it. It's just reality. It, it was about 2017. It was a 3.3 kilowatt, so I didn't use the whole power of the unit. And then I switched to a 2019, which is 7.2 kilowatt. So the idea here for my experience is that when I drive around the province and I stop everywhere I stop, at the moment I, do, I, talk, I work with a lot of dealerships, so most of them have them. So in my own situation, I can stop everywhere and top off all the time, even though I have only 85 kilometers of range on my car, then I can always stay electric all day and come back and do 400 kilometers during the day because I have a 7.2. Thought that be, might be interesting. Cable support and length. Very simple. It's just like I said, you'll be using it every day. Mm -hmm. It's a daily uh, gesture. So you want something that's really convenient. So you can roll it around very easily and just put back the, uh, the gun into it. Protected access. Maybe you'd like that. I'll give you an example. If you live in a more densely populated area and you have your neighbor like two meters away from your driveway, everybody's close together, and you don't want anybody hooking up to your unit while you are at work. Or if you live 
next to a company where there's a lot of employees driving in with EVs, driving in with EVs, and they, you don't want them in your driveway, so you just program the hours why they're not there. Hmm. What yeah. about charging at work? Would yeah. you help me out with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. excellent question. Um, okay. Um, as we talked before, um, we are going to fill up the car everywhere you are, at the go, at home, or at work. And it must be really simple. We have different charging stations, and when we talk about this environment, you have to think about different things. You can do free charging versus paid charging, it depends. But the most important for site owners is the infrastructure for the future. It's not to add one charging station, it's to preview the infrastructure for the future. With a charging station at work, you can define the use, a public use or private use. It depends. It's according to the needs of the site owner. It must fit with existing electric infra infrastructure, but it must, it must be defined for the future. It, it must be simple. It must be simple because uh, all the installation must be scalable. Very important. And the most important thing, like the flow home, is to control demand peaks. Because if you don't want to pay a big price after for the operational cost, it must be really, really important to have control demand peaks. And yes, one thing, we talk about that a lot of time together. Only one card, only one card to use a public charging station and a private charging station. Like it must one. be simple. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It must be simple for the end customer, and it must be simple for the site owner. Always we will talk about the experience. What about the growing market, Alex? Well, if we got your interest, then at this point we should talk about how it's growing. I mean, uh, it's, uh, we're almost to 100,000 uh, uh, EVs in Canada. It's growing at this rate. I mean, it's pretty good, uh, and we're looking at about a 20% market share uh, around 2030. Let's, let's give us a, a bit of a leeway and let's think about it's around, it's going to be around that. So, for instance, in the dealership uh, lots, we should see more stock in the future because we should grow up to 20%, so that, that should be interesting as well. And that's why we have to think about the infrastructure for the future. What about the electric well, vehicles? I, yeah, we put together this slide just to make uh, just to make a point that at the moment there's over 40 uh, different models of uh, plug-in vehicles in Canada, and most of the time you can't even tell if they are. I mean, I invite you to look at the uh, front left of the door or the back right, or sometimes you have two open oh, two traps, two open door, two openable doors on the vehicle. Uh, that's that's the way to tell them apart if you don't follow the uh, the news, the EV news. But you're looking at the Audi, Volkswagen, Nissan, GM, it's, there's also, let's say, the Pacifica from Chrysler. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, segments out there. They're, they are out there. They, they don't look like, a, like a, um, a extra terrestrial uh, vehicles anymore. <laughs> they're just normal vehicles. Yeah, and most of the time when you think about uh, an electric car, you start with a plug-in hybrid electric. But most of the time, you, according to your use, uh, think about the 50 kilometers a day, you will use your car in an electric mode. So after you're driving an electric, 100% electric car. There's nothing better than drive back home at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. And exactly. having done everything, having gone to work, picking up the kids, doing the groceries and mm -hmm. everything, having spent like 52 kilometers. Exactly. Having spent a dollar on, uh, on gas. So it's okay, what are the types of charging stations? This is really important. It, it, it has to stay in every presentation because that's just a fact. Everybody asks the question. So let's, <coughs> let's look at it right now. There's level two, there's, le there's level one, there's level two, and there's level three. So let me explain it. When you purchase the car, there's a wire that comes with it, there's a plug that comes with it. It's called level one because that's the first one they created. Just so the car could work. Yeah, you can plug it just like a toaster. You can buy the car now and drive off. Yeah. Soon enough, everybody realized that it wasn't fast enough. 
because the batteries were getting bigger and bigger, obviously. So they came up with a level two charging system, which is the most uh, spread out. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And level one is the worst experience you can have as an individual. <laughs> I use it when I go to the, uh, my uh, parents' uh, yeah. summer. It summer kind of helps. But because, well, if I'm staying there for three days, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it does make sense, but it happens every, you know, maybe two times a year. So I will use it. But the manufacturers will say, don't use that every day, just so you know. And so you have many reasons for using a level two, and that's the main segment uh, EVAC or charging equipment. That's what you need. Uh, we'll go through uh, different uh, situations. Yeah. And then you have your fast chargers. They call it fast chargers because when you're using those, they're 400 volt uh, charging units. When you're using those, it's because you're in transit. You're going somewhere. You're in a rush. There's no time to waste. You're in your car. You're waiting for it. That's why it's called a fast charger. The level two is faster than the level one. But the one that most people say is the fast charger is the level three. So just don't want to mix anybody up. It's just level one, level two, and a fast charger. Yeah, that's just how it is. Let me say Let's, yeah. uh, let's have a look. Let's uh, make it more complicated. I mean, uh, <laughs> the other question you get by then uh, is uh, what about Tesla? And then how come there's so many uh, standards? <clears throat> Let me explain. The level two charging stations are all set up to charge every car in, in North America with the same SAEJ1772 standard. They're all set up like that. You can charge up any car. You can install or use a charging station at a site, and uh, all the cars will adopt the same uh, protocol in the future. It's being, take, being taken care of. Okay. So when you drive up to a fast charger, a 400 uh, volt charger, the, right there, there's still that beta and VHS fight, you know? They're still not clear which one is going to prevail. At the moment, you still have the shadow mode for Nissan, and. Uh, Mitsubishi, and then uh, the combo is for, let's say, GM and the Ionic uh, uh, Hyundai. So one day, uh, we'll see how it goes, but at the moment, when you drive up to a level three charger, a fast charger, you have both. <coughs> as long as you have the right one for your car, they're both there. And then the one that kind of mixes uh, it all up is Tesla. Well, Tesla is very, very simple to understand, right? They have their own cars, everybody knows this, their own network. But also, Elon wanted his own uh, his own uh, profile, I guess, for the uh, for the protocol. But if you look at the at the pins, they're basically the same as the uh, as the SA, as the SAEJ one seven seven two standard. It's just that he wanted it in a different form, right? So if you're driving a Tesla, you'll be bringing along your own adapter to use the public network. It is sold with, uh, with the Tesla, so you can buy it, very simple, and after yeah. you will use any kind of charging station. That's right, it's, but it's there for all. Uh, Tesla at the moment is having a great success with the, level, uh, the Model 3, but I, I, last time I checked was about 10% of the market, so you still have 85, 90% of the market, which is not Tesla, remember that. All the, uh, the products from, uh, from Europe and uh, Asia and North America are there. Why are we talking about smart charging station, Alexandre? Uh, smart charging stations, uh, when we say smart charging stations, they're basically connected. Exactly. Uh, they're not really uh, supercomputers, they're connected. So that provides you with information from the unit, from the uh, charging experience, and, uh, and all the, the uh, information you need back and forth. So that will give you a better user experience. That'll give you also the, the possibility of, let's say, you're a site owner, you're putting up two, three charging stations, and they're connected. Obviously, you, you'll have activation, and uh, 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 yeah, activation basically, and uh, you'll be able to configure your access rules and your rates. Remember that you're the site owner; you decide what you do with it. Uh, and then smart energy management—that's also very important. Uh, you need to make sure that your electricity bill doesn't go off, uh, off the rails. Uh, at the moment, there aren't very many EVs, but in the future, you want to set up today to be sure that when it hits, uh, when the wave hits and you get more and more, they're all going to plug at the same time in the morning. So, re or, uh, so remember, 
they'll all be asking for that electricity at the same time so it adds up, so you get peaks. You want to prevent that, so keep that in mind. Um, and then user de usage data, it, obviously you might want to know who uh, or how they uh, are their habits of charging. You want yourself to know what your own habits are. You may want to play around with the numbers and the, what I do, what I do is I print it out and give it to my account every year because you know, it's a write-off, right? No, not a write-off, but they, uh, you know, yeah. it goes on the yeah. Yeah. And, and, and for the side journal, you can change the model if you want a free charging session or a paid charging session. With this data, you will be able to take the right decision. Mm -hmm. Very important for mm -hmm. that. Okay, so let's have a look uh, about the different kind of charging solutions. I, I, I know we didn't come here to do a pitch, uh, John, like uh, to the products, but uh, we have four different products, and the reason why is because it answers all the segments. Mm -hmm. And let's go through that right now. We're not going to name the product, we're just going to say that you have first, you have destination charging. Think about that, that's really important. Where does the car stay 90% of the day? I mean, either in your driveway or at work. So that is destination charging. Uh, you need a, a versatile level 2 charging station, ideal for parking uh, areas of any size. So you're thinking apartment building, condominiums, commercial properties, workplaces, and fleet yeah, yeah, nice, okay. And then you want some, some way of setting it up. Do you want it up the wall? Do you want it up the wall with cable management? Do you want to do some digging and put it a bit away from the building and uh, depending on your site setup, whichever way you want to go, and with uh, your uh, strategy and your contractor as well. So we have to talk to the market, so let's have a look about the public charging stations. Alex? Public charging stations have specific needs. Uh, first of all, uh, let's say, let's, let's look, look at the applications. You want to look at retail stores, shopping centers, commercial properties, hotels. <coughs> We've, uh, we've installed in restaurants, uh, cities are interested in that, and uh, all around public buildings, uh, we'll use those as well. Um, I've seen also a lot of installations in, on campuses, <coughs> universities or colleges, what have you. But basically, public charging, you need 100% fee, because pe people are paying for it, you need access control, and you need to charge on it, and you need it to be seen on the, on the network. When I say, you need a rate on it because at the moment we're talking about a dollar an hour, a dollar fifteen hour. I haven't seen two dollars yet, but uh, no. it's just we're not. It's not about okay. making money. It's more about making sure that people drive away when they're done. I mean, whatever you, how much how much money you make, I mean, it will always bother you that you're paying for nothing. So that basically makes sure that people will not stay in there because if you're the site owner. You don't want any bad. Uh, comments or emails or what have you from your community uh, saying that there's always the same guy stuck in your uh, and you don't want to police it in, in yourself. So the whole idea of public charging and having a rate at this moment, the business model is you want people to turn over, to get out when they're done. So that's, that's the idea right now. Even though as a site owner you can choose to change or amp up the, uh, the rate in the future. Yeah, and very quickly. When you're there. When you're there, that's a public charging. And you have different kind of configurations. Well, mounted, yeah. pedestal. It depends, of course, on the locations. Yeah, you even have a quadruple one if you have like in the yeah. middle of four. You're right. Pole mounted. Okay. So and then cities uh, like uh, like uh, for instance, if you go downtown Montreal, that's one of our bigger clients that have installed this unit, which is a very low footprint uh, unit, and it's uh, basically destined for curbside on city streets. And with the cable management system, it's perfect. And it works well, everybody's happy with the product right now. Yeah. <clears throat> and also, the cable doesn't stay on the ground. Yeah, and especially in winter. It's especially in winter with the snow yeah. shoveling, yeah. right? Exactly. exactly. That's exactly. really important. That's why it's all together as a uh, unit. <laughs> okay, what about the transit charging? Transit, right? transit charging, we talked about uh, in the beginning. It's really important that we make a difference between your everyday use and that one time you'll be transiting that one time you'll be going on a trip. Or maybe you're a rep like me, <laughs> and you, yeah, and, you yeah. and you need it, but there's so few of us. The whole main market, everybody kind of commutes and the car stays there all day. That's, that's the, uh, uh, the majority, 
majority of people that do do that. So transit charging is when you want to get to, from point A to point B and don't want to be bothered, and so you need a faster charger. At this moment, if you are wondering what kind of power are there in those units, we, are, uh, we have installed and still are installing 50 kilowatt uh, units. And in the future, we're working on the, the next uh, generation of uh, 100 kilowatt uh, units in the future. It's not out yet, but uh, we're looking forward to introducing them to the market. But for now, 50 kilo, uh, kilowatt will provide you with, uh, let's say, you drive the Volt. It's yeah. the slowest charging one, so how, how long does it take? That's the worst it, case it, scenario. It depends, of course, when, <laughs> in winter or during right. the rest of the year. But most of the time, it's uh, for me, for my Volt, it's about 40 minutes for 80% of the charge. So doing that, I can take a coffee, <laughs> make calls, very simple, and after I take the Volt. And you? What about you? Okay, um, I leave home full. I do, let's say, on a good day, uh, let's say 85 kilometers. So yeah. I drive, I live in Quebec City. I, I'll go to Montreal very often in a week or in a month. And then I'll leave uh, Quebec and I'll do 80 clicks and then it'll switch, it, switch the gas and I'll finish my, finish my trip to Montreal. You can't even tell when it switches. But when I get to Montreal, then I stop at a destination, like I said, and, and with my uh, faster charger, uh, on my car, it's, it makes it quite uh, worthwhile that I can fill up again everywhere I stop. So at this moment, it lowers my uh, gas per mileage with my car. That's what it does with my Volt. But with his car, there's no gas, so you just... No, <laughs> no, no, fortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay, so what is your strategy for the future? Very important to think about that. Yeah, we just wanted to make a point or a point this morning to first establish what is going to be your strategy. I think we all know that. I think that uh, our goal today is to provide you with some good points to help you draw it out and, and to know exactly where you want to go, and what's your five year, 10 year uh, plan, and uh, what are you going to need uh, short, uh, mid, and long term. Uh, I hope it will be helpful this morning uh, to you. That we're looking at right now is an array of, I think, eight or ten units. Uh, yeah. um, the first thing I want you to uh, notice that they're all installed in a daisy chain. Uh, you, can't, you can't tell, obviously, because it's all underground. But let's say you start with two, three, four, or just one unit. But always for remember, the future. Yeah, for the future. for the future, always remember to have, first, a unit that can do daisy chaining. But the second thing is, if you're going to pour concrete, <laughs> I mean, it, it sounds stupid, but it's a good, very important point. If you're going to pour concrete, put the... Um, or the cables. No, the, 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 the concrete, the... Uh, thank you, thank you. All the conduits, and that costs nothing. But you'll be ready when you want to upscale or, or uh, add more units in the future, you'll save on installation instead of digging again every time. Just thought I'd mention that. That's exactly. also very important. Exactly. And the cost of excavation will be only one side at the beginning of the project, but after, we, you, you won't have to do that. Again and again and again. Yeah, exactly. So, think about installation, of course. We, we have talked about the cost, about the simplicity to add units uh, as time goes by. And what about energy management? Energy management, okay. so. <laughs> I didn't want to get too technical, but this is this is a way to, yeah. of, of illustrating a very very important point. So let's say you're in the future, you have ten units, and you have either a fleet or a lot of employees that come in the morning at the same time. Look at the time; are they're, they're all going to ask the power at the same time. So you're looking at a peak. So if you have energy management, well, actually you want energy management because you want the green curve. Because you're plugging in all, that's all at the same time, but nobody needs their car during the day. So who cares if they're getting charged in the first 10 minutes? Nobody cares. So you can have the units manage the power and even it out, keep it under your peak and control your cost, and everybody will be fine with all their cars filled up at the end of the day. That's as simply as I can put it. Energy management. It is the most important thing site owners have to think about. Yep. Great. Yeah, maybe not today, but soon enough, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, exactly. So, how does it work? Well, that's your speciality. 
<laughs> setting up the so, so so Okay, it is an example. You have uh, 150 amps uh, on your site, and you want to add, as time goes by, different units. Very simple. You put a link, and you have only one charging station protected by a 40 amps uh, breaker. Okay, it is the beginning. The second year, or maybe a few months after, you will add on the same pedestal another charging station, but without any excavation, without, without any other uh, uh, projects to do to add these units. And it is the same thing after that, because you will have that in different locations, and the cost will be the same. Very easy, very easy. And it is the world we have to remember of this presentation, the simplicity to add different charging stations in different locations um, for the end customer and for the site owner. That's it. That's it. So simple. <laughs> I hope uh, that we all help you guys uh, <coughs> learn maybe from me quite a few things maybe and uh, help you generate the right questions to get your on your way on your projects and uh, make it as quick as uh, simple as possible. That's what we do. You may ask me why I don't put an Q&A section in this video. Well, in fact, I want to make a follow-up video based on this. It will tackle the problems from both the charging speed and the charging cost side.